Hi, boys and girls. We are working on Chapter 1, Lesson 7 today, Subtracting Whole Numbers. And I have jumped right up here to number 2. Each of these has two parts to them. One part is to estimate, and the other part is to do the actual. So we're going to start with the estimating. Okay? We round to estimate in these problems. We're going to round to the highest place value of each of these numbers. I like to underline them because then that reminds me that the underlined digit is the one that is going to either stay what it is or go up one. Okay, so the four in this number is either going to stay four or go up to five. Well, here's how I like to round. I like to box it out with the number next to it and you can use your rhyme, five or more raise the score, four or less let it rest. Okay. Or you can think about it like it's on a number line. 42 is between 40 and 50 on a number line. 40 and 50. Which one is it closer to? Well, 42 is only two away from 40. That rounds to 40. But you also have to remember, boom, 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 boom. That number is not just plain old 40. It's 400,000. Okay. Let's look at. 175,842. Box, box, box it out. 17, is that closer to 10 or 20? Because I know my underlined digit, that 1 is either going to stay 1 or go up to 2. So is 17 closer to 10 or 20? Well, think about where 17 is on a number line between 10 and 20. It's definitely closer to 20. And of course, we are remembering all the place values because we're up in the 100,000 zone. All right, let's subtract. Yay! <laughs> Hooray! We love those, right? Zero, 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 two. Okay, so our estimated answer is 200,000. Now let's get our actual answer. We have to remember to think about regrouping when we subtract, okay? Now, sometimes people say, oh, look, it's 1 minus 2. That can't be done. Well, it really can be done in math, but we're not going to do it when we're subtracting these big whole numbers right now, okay? So 1 minus 2, we need to regroup because if I have one pencil, you can't take two pencils away from me. I only have one. All right, so we go to the next place value over, and we take a set of those, and we bring it to the ones place. So we took a set of 10. Goodbye, three. We took one, so now you're only two, and we brought it over to the ones place. So a set of 10 and one more is 11. So now we have 11 minus two. 11, 10, nine. I just counted backwards for that one because I only had to go back two. Tens place, 2 minus 4. 2 minus 4, again, we have to regroup. Go to the next place value over. It's a 7, 7, goodbye. We are taking one of you. And you are only 6 now. So we take that set and give it to the tens place this time. So now instead of 2 minus 4, we have 12 minus 4. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. I used it counting backwards again for that one. All right, moving on to the hundreds place. 6 minus 8. Goodness gracious, it's a regrouping extravaganza. Goodbye, 8. We are taking one from you. You are only 7 now. We're bringing that set over here. Instead of 6 hundreds, now we have 16 hundreds. So let's see. 16 minus 8. Oh, that's a doubles fact. 16 minus 8 is 8, because I know 8 plus 8 is 16. Going to the thousands place, 7 minus 5. Oh, no regrouping. whoopity doo doo 7 minus 5. So this one, I'm going to go 5, touching my head. 5 in my head. I'm counting up to 7. 6, 7. I have two fingers up. 
7 minus 5 is 2. Ugh, 2 minus 7. Regroup again. Very exciting problem, isn't it? 4, we're taking one from you. We're bringing it over here. So instead of 2 ten thousands, now we have 12 ten thousands. 12 minus 7. Okay, 7. I'm touching my head saying 7. And then every time I say a number, I put up a finger. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I have five fingers up. The difference between 12 and 7 is 5. 12 minus 7 is 5. And then 3 minus 1 is 2. I bet you knew that one. Let's see if our answer is reasonable. 252,889 is our actual answer. And checking our estimate, 200,000, reasonable. They're pretty close. Number three. The reason I chose this one to do is because it has a couple of zeros in it. Okay? So let's get the estimate first. I'm going to the highest place value because it doesn't tell me not to use that one. Sometimes the directions say round to the thousands, and then you have to round to the thousands. But this one, I'm going highest place value. So I know the 9 and the 5 are the ones that are either going to stay the same or go up. I'm going to box it out. 92. On a number line, 92 is between 90 and 100, and that's closer to 90. But again, make sure you get every place value in the number you're working with. So 920,026 rounds to 900,000. 535,722. Let's see. Boom, 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 boom. 53. 53 is between 50 and 60 on a number line, and it is closer to 50. Boom. Boop, boop, boop. And boys and girls, if you would like to use your rhyme or some other method, you may. For 53 and rounding, if you want to look at that and say five or more, raise the score, four or less, let it rest, that's fine. Use that one. Use whatever works for you. So let's subtract and get our estimate. Nine minus five. Five, I'm touching my head when I'm saying five, and I'm jumping up to nine and seeing the difference between nine and five. How many jumps? Five, and every time I say a number, I'm gonna put up a finger. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. That was four fingers I put up. Don't put up a finger when you say five, because that's what you that's where you are on the number line. Boom. Five. And then six is a finger. Seven, eight, nine. So the estimate is four hundred thousand. Now let's subtract. Six minus two. I know that one's four. Two minus two. Ooh. Zero. I knew that one too. Zero minus seven can't do that because it's 0 minus 7. So we have to regroup on this one, right, boys and girls? All right, let's go over here. And we can't regroup, can we, from a 0. So what do we do? Keep going. We're going to keep searching, right? So this 2, we are taking one of you sets of 10,000. So now you're only 1. Thank you, 10,000. And we're going to take that set, and instead of no thousands, now we have 10,000s. But that doesn't really help us here yet, does it? It doesn't help us subtract 0 minus 7. So guess what? Farewell, 10. I'm taking one of you, and instead of 0 hundreds, now we have 10 hundreds because I took one of those thousands. 10 minus 7 is 3. You, and I, you, you guys know how to make 10s pretty well, I bet. 10 minus 7 is 3. OK, on to the thousands. 9 minus 5, 5 in my head, 6, 7, 8, 9, 4. And 1 minus 3. Ding, ding, ding. Regroup again. 
goodbye, nine hundred thousands. You now only have eight because I'm giving a set to the ten thousands place. So now I have 11 sets of 10,000. 11 minus three. Let's see. Since it's only three, I'm going to count backwards. 11 is where I'm starting. And three back. 10, nine, eight. Counting backwards worked for that one. That was quick. Eight minus five. I know that one too, because I know five plus three is eight. Okay, comma. Now we're going to check to see if our answers are reasonable. Our estimate was 400,000. Our actual is 384,304. I'd say totally reasonable. Right? Let's keep going. Okay, down to the problem solving page. It says use the table for eight and nine. Here is the table. I'm going to look at the table before I even start this. The title of the table is Seasons Attendance for Three NBA Teams. Okay, the Pacers, Orlando Magic, and the Clippers. And here is the attendance. Boys and girls, you know what attendance means in school. It means if you're in school that day or not. So the attendance at a basketball game is they count how many people came to that game. So this is for the whole season, though. So for the Indiana Pacers, 582,295 people came for the season. For the Magic, 715,901 people came. The Clippers, 670,063 people came. All right. Number eight. How many more people attended the Magic's games than attended the Pacers' games? How many more people? They're asking me the difference in the number of people that came to the Magic versus the Pacers' game. Anytime they're asking you the difference, that's subtraction, boys and girls, the difference between the number of people in those two games. Let's see here. Magic and Pacers. So the difference, I have to subtract them. So when I'm setting this up to subtract, I'm going to be sure that I put the greater value as the top number so that I'm taking away 582,295 so I can find the difference. Okay, here we go. 1 minus 5. I have to regroup. Oops, oh, there's a 0. Keep going. Goodbye, 9. I'm taking 1. You're an 8. And I'm giving that set of 100 to the tens place. So now we have 10 sets of 10. But I'm still not able to subtract 1 minus 5. So goodbye. I'm taking you. And I'm giving that set to the ones place. So now I have 11 minus 5. Oh, I can do that. I know 10 minus 5 is 5. So 11 minus 5 must be 6. 9 minus 9. 0, 8 minus 2, 8, 7, 6, 6, 5 minus 2, oh, I know those pretty well, that's 3, 1 minus 8, oh, re groupy, boop, right, 11 minus 8, this one I'm going to count up, I'm going to think 8 in my head, 8, 9, 10, 11, that's 3. And then the last one, 6 minus 5. Oh, I know that one. 1. So the difference in the attendance is 133,606. That's how many more people attended the, magics, the Magic Games. So I'm going to put people like that. Number 9. How many fewer people attended the Pacers game than attended the Clippers game. So this one asks how many more. This one asks how many fewer. 
So boys and girls, they're still asking kind of the same question. What's the difference between the number of people who came to those games? They just said it differently. Okay, how many more people, how many fewer people? They still want to know the difference between the two amounts. And difference is what we call the answer to... Oh my goodness, the microphone fell down. Can you hear me? <laughs> I'm going to say what I just said again. Fewer and more. Those are the big differences in these two questions. How many fewer people attended? How many more people attended? They still want to know difference. And difference is subtraction. It's the answer to subtraction problems. So pacers and clippers. Pacers, clippers. Okay, we're going to put the number that is greater first because we need the greater number to have the other number taken away from it, 582,000. Okay, so let's subtract. 3 minus 5, regroup. Goodbye, 6. 13 minus 5, 13 minus 5 is 8. So then 5 minus 9, regroup. Oh my goodness, I see some zeros here. Here we go, boys and girls. Can't regroup from there. Can't regroup from there. we got to go to our friend the 7. Goodbye, 7. We're taking one. We're giving it to you. Goodbye. Because we're giving it to you. Now, can we subtract 10 minus 2? Yes. Oh, I, that's not even the one we're working for. It's this one. Good gravy. There. We had, to, we had to take it away, make it a 9, and give it to the 15. I mean, give it to the 5 and make it 15. So it's 15 minus 9. Now, 15 minus 9, I'm going to start at 9 in my head and count up to 15. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That is 6. Another way I do that is I know that 15 is 5 away from 10. So if I'm getting to 9, that's one more. And that's 6. Okay, so then we have 9 minus 2, 7. 9 minus 2 again, isn't that lovely? 7. 6 minus 8, regroup. Goodbye. Boop. 16 minus 8, oh, another fancy doubles fact. I know 8 plus 8 is 16. And then 5 minus 5, boys and girls, don't put a 0 right there. Okay, just leave it. Do not put a 0 there. So the how many fewer people attended the Pacers game? 887,768 people. Okay? It's the difference between the two games attendance. All right, now we're on the lesson check, boys and girls, on the back. It says, this year a farm planted 400,000 corn stalks. Last year, the farm planted 275,650 corn stalks. How many more corn stalks did the farm plant this year than last year? All right. How many more? They're asking what the difference is. How many more? How many less? How many fewer? How much taller? How much shorter? All of those are asking difference, okay? 400, and difference, as you know, is the answer to a subtraction problem. Okay, there are a lot of strategies to do zero extravaganzas like this. We're just going to regroup, okay? Zero minus zero is zero. So, Zero minus five. Here we go. Do, 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 do. Yay! We can take some from you. Four. You're a three. One. That's a ten. Goodbye. One. Goodbye. You get one. Goodbye. And there you go. Now I can do ten minus five. Oh, another doubles fact. 
Okay, 9 minus 6, oh, I know that's 3, because I, I can count by 3s pretty well. 9 minus 5, I know that one's 4, because 5 plus 5 is 10, so 9 minus 5, that's only 4. 9 minus 7, 7, 8, 9, that's 2. And then 3 minus 2 is 1. 124,350 more corn stalks. This is number four, and now we're down to spiral review. Okay, guys? So this goes back to um, the second lesson of this chapter. Let me read this one. Kevin read the number 207,048 in a book. What is this number in standard form? Now, as you can see by the choices, standard form is just the regular old way of writing a number. Standard. All right, let me look up here again. 207,048. Now I remember when I say a word like thousand, million, billion, that's the comma. Okay, so this is before the comma. I'm just going to read it by itself. 207 and then the comma. 207. Okay, I know how to write 207. 207. Thousand. Okay, and then 48. Well, I know how to write 48. But if I just write 48, that's not what numbers look like. You guys know that periods of numbers have three digits in them, and that's only two digits. So guess what? This number just doesn't happen to have anything in the hundreds place. 207,000. 48. Bing, 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 bing. You guys are awesome. Please be sure to finish everything your teachers asked you to do.